So this is the new EG4 12K PV. It's like an 18K PV and has all the same features, but it's smaller. Now the 12K refers to the PV input. It does not refer to the AC output of the inverter. So the total AC output, it's split phase 120 and 240 is 8,000 watts. So this might be too small for some of you, or it might be just the right size. The big plus with this unit is the surge capacity. It can actually start a five ton AC. So with an 8,000 watt inverter, that's pretty darn impressive, or we'll see when we test it. But first we're gonna connect the grid right here, and then we're gonna connect a load center and a battery. So let's throw this thing together. Now this battery can output 200 amps, so it can fully support the output of this unit's inverter, but not the solar charge controller. So if you're planning to max this out, you're gonna to have to have two batteries. But a single battery can support 10,000 watts, so it really depends. You can also over panel your system and have a smaller battery. It's really up to you. Or you could have no solar and charge your battery when it's cheap and then discharge it when it's more expensive. These are not easy to work with. And the torque spec for the battery cables is 22.9 foot pounds. And I had some loops in here, but it was really ugly and harder for beginners to follow. So I just made them direct connections. But yeah, let's turn this thing on. First, we need to turn on the battery. For that, we need a battery communication cable. So all the switches should be on except for the first one. I remember this confused me last time, so I'm watching my old video. So we have the battery communication cable that comes in the box and it's gonna be orange. You're gonna plug it into battery communication, then you're gonna plug it into CAN for CAN bus. And then the ID switches, the first one will be off and all the rest will be on and then you're gonna flip the battery breaker and then the breaker on the actual battery itself. And then we're gonna turn the battery on and then it's turning on. And if it shows the state of charge and it matches what it shows down here on this screen, that means that they're communicating. And now it's working 17% up here and 17% down here. Also a quick note, something we learned on the forum is an installer, a professional, did not use ferrules on these PV inputs on the 18K PV. And that is bad. You need to use ferrules when you connect your PV conductors. And you need to use a ferrule crimper. If not, it can actually get hot and it can melt this. But the battery cables in the AC in and out don't need to be ferruled, just the PV conductors. Now it shows 240 volts, so we're gonna connect a car lift to the AC output. And this is a very challenging load. We have a 3,500 pound car and let's see what happens. Yeah, it did not struggle at all. Let's try again. That sounds really good actually. It's kind of like the 18K. We need a ground neutral bond but it depends on if you're connected to grid or not. So please read the manual for your ground neutral bond. I have some videos on it about all the different configurations. It can be a little bit tricky because I'm not gonna have any others in parallel and I'm not gonna be connected to the grid. I'm just gonna create one inside the box closest to the source. So we need to turn everything off. We're gonna add a jumper between the neutral and the ground bar. But again, this is not for everybody. Most people will not have this configuration. It might be an internal grounding relay, but I just want to get this to work. I really don't want to mess with software for half an hour. And we should be good. Let's fire it up. So turn on the battery and the breaker. And it shows a green light. And now we're charging with 32 amps at 240 volts. And that's 7,680 watts continuous. Now something the 18K can do is charge a Tesla with 32 amps and run the car lift. And the car lift is only on a single leg, so it's a very strenuous test. But let's see if the 12K can do it. And this is the best way to test the line balancing function. So let's see what happens. No way. Holy cow. An 8,000 watt inverter, almost at max capacity, can also run the car lift. The surge for its output is supposed to be better than the 18K, and I don't think they're joking. 
Also, it has a tough time when the car is already lifted. So this is even harder than most of my usual testing. Now this battery is gonna die, so I'm gonna disconnect the Tesla. And we're gonna charge this battery back up. And then we're gonna connect the grid, but it's actually the 18K PV on the other side of the workshop. I think we need to change the settings so that it will charge. I don't even have the CTs on here. I forgot to add these, I'm such an idiot. Oh, they're labeled now, that's nice. CT, and then connect the grid. And let's set up a charging schedule. I think the screen is better. I don't know what they did, but it's easier. So I'm trying to change the settings and they have a stupid password on here. I hate when these companies do that. So I found a workaround. You don't need the password to connect to the dongle. So I changed all the settings and then it started charging. And this is much easier than using this screen. I wanted to use the screen in the video, but that stupid password kind of screwed up my whole videoing idea. And I just got a text saying what the password is. It's zero. And now he's laughing at me. So if you're setting up and you want to use the screen and not connect to Wi-Fi, the password is zero. So now we're going to charge this battery all the way up to full and then discharge it into this car again and just kind of use it for a couple of weeks. And if I do have problems, I can add it to this video. So yeah, let's come back in a couple of weeks after I cycle it a few times. So fast forward a few days later and it's been charging my car every day. I added some more batteries and it has its own solar panel array. The results are pretty boring. It works just like an 18K, but it's smaller. Now the 18K that this is based off of is already very reliable. And this is practically the same thing. So me cycling it every day is probably not gonna tell us much. So what we're gonna do now is test the surge capacity with air compressors. And behind the camera, there's quite a few air compressors that I bought. So let's hook them up and see what happens. We have an inrush clamp meter, the first compressor. And that was 39.5 amps. Compressor number two. Now we're gonna turn them both on, put our meter on. Now this compressor is on the left leg and this one is on the right leg. And then I'm gonna turn them both on with the main breaker. Woo. That was really loud. And the inrush was 80.1 amps for that one. And let's try it one more time. 82.2 that time. So this will technically overload the breakers, but we can still test the initial inrush. So let's see what happens. Two are on the left leg and two are on the right leg. Actually, let's do a supply conductor. That will be better. Seventy six point two on a single leg and it kept running and nothing stopped at all with all of these This is six horsepower. This is a lot of current I'm surprised the breakers didn't trip and just so you guys know this is not connected to grid It's been in off-grid mode the whole time. Also, the batteries are only at 20% state of charge I really thought it was gonna trip that time. Maybe we should add a heat gun. I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss I thought it was gonna trip I thought it would trip with four, and then I was gonna go down to three, but this kind of changes my plans. This has to make it trip. High frequency inverters hate heat guns. 1500 watt heat gun, four air compressors. Let's see what happens. Full power. What? It's actually working. Oh. We finally tripped a breaker on the panel. The inverter did not trip. That is crazy. Let's just run the four compressors and see if they can go up to pressure without tripping anything. <laughs> oh, it was the breakers. So now we have a 40 amp breaker. Let's see what happens. All right, it passed the test, guys. Now it's getting kind of boring. It's just hurting my ears now. So yeah, this thing's rated to start a five ton AC. If you have four air compressors, you can also do that. So yeah, if you have a well pump or something, it's gonna be no problem. Imagine what the 18K can do. I bet I haven't tested that. I've never tripped that one. And I've been using it for over a year now. But I guess it could run like six of these or maybe even more. 
That's crazy. But yeah, that one's designed for a whole home. And they're not joking when they say that. So the final test I can think of is all four of these and the car lift. That is a lot of power. So we're gonna measure it. We're gonna start all four. And the car lift. No way. It did it. It lifted the car. It's only 76. And these motors have to start at the same time as the car lift to actually get some high inrush. And that might actually trip it. So let's try that. So we're gonna use a clamp on the car lift. There we go. All right, it's all set up. Once that car lift starts running, I need to turn it off at the switch before it hits the top. There we go. It actually worked, you guys. No way. 108 amps on a single leg. That is pretty darn good. Considering it can run the car lift, I bet this thing could run six air compressors. But yeah, this I already spent over $1,000 on these for these videos, so. so I think it's safe to say it has a good surge capacity. And testing inverters in the future with these air compressors will be nice and easy. So pretty impressive, but which one should you actually buy? The 6000 XP has great output for the money. The 12K has amazing surge capacity, but do you really want to buy a 12K when you can buy an 18K? So I think this is how I'm going to divvy it up. If you want to back up your entire home and you need a 200 amp transfer switch, the 18K is for you. But if you don't need that transfer switch and you know that from now and in the future, you're not going to exceed 8,000 watts continuous, then the 12K is for you. But personally, I would go for an 18K anyways, because it's just as hard to mount the thing, so you might as well just get the bigger one, and you're only saving like $1,300 or something. But if you are on a budget and you need a hybrid specific or a grid interactive inverter, this one is the cheapest one around, especially with that performance. Now another option if you can't afford an 18K is you can run a critical loads panel off of the 12K and set up your system for net metering and use the grid. Back feed the grid if it's legal to do so and have a complete whole home backup, but you won't be able to back up everything. You'll just be able to back up your fridge, your furnace and everything that's critical. Now the more difficult question is whether you should buy 6,000 XPs in parallel or 12 and 18K PVs. If you don't need grid interactive features the 6000 xp is fantastic but and i have an entire video about this the 6000 xp is not a sealed unit the build quality of the 12 and the 18k they're made to last a very long time the 6000 xp that circuit board is used in south africa for turning on well pumps all day long 24 7 and they have put hundreds of megawatt hours through them so it has fantastic surge capabilities but I think the 12 and the 18K will last longer. I think they'll last decades. Um, the 6000 XP, it should, but it really depends on the environment that you put it in. You have to put it in a cool, dry location indoors. With the 12 and the 18K, you can put that thing on the side of your house. You can do whatever you want with it and it just won't break. It's sealed and the warranty is better for that reason. So yeah, lots to consider here, but the 12K is more impressive than I thought. Usually the smaller versions are not as good, but I think this one might be better for its output compared to the competition. This is a fantastic unit. Also, the touchscreen seems to have improved. The one thing that I can say with the 12 and the 18K is they need to update the app. It's just outdated. The only hiccup I've had is that when you're trying to refresh the app, it doesn't seem to want to do it all the time and I have to restart it. And that's on Android only. But they said that they're going to have a new app very soon and they understand that issue and they're going to fix it. And they're supposedly going to make it look really cool. It's going to look totally different. But we'll see when it comes out. Usually with new software, there's always Always going to be issues. Software is like the hardest thing to get right. And that's pretty much it. That was a pretty fun video. I really like doing the car lift and all that. I couldn't believe it. That is incredibly powerful for that small of a unit. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.